Yes, they did a good job this <laughs> time.
started out the wheel this race. I promised the Lord in 1986, March the 30th, that I was going to live for Him till the day I die. Come on, somebody. And I just figured I made it 30 years. I might as well hang on. There ain't nothing to turn back to. Amen. Hallelujah.
other one?
bed. He said, I see no reason not to let you go. Yes, Come on, a day man. early, which woo -woo, we're really happy. Amen. He said, but you know, to go through this one time, that's really good. Okay, one round. But to go through two rounds of it and never be sick, never be sick is amazing.
He's good all the time, ain't he?
that song I don't like. I don't like that last line that says, when I kneel in prayer, I hope to meet you there. Every time I've ever knelt in prayer, the Lord has met me there. So I appreciate you this morning.
years ago, when I was a lot younger, called something in the upper room. We used to do it at Spring Street at our pastor's church, my pastor's church. And I think we do it at the end. Whatever key we're going to do it again, I'm going to hit it. Is that all right? Jesus said when he went away, the cover to a call to you.
know about four more keys, man. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Hallelujah. You have a children's church today? Or a children's church. All those kids can go with Sister Connie. I don't have a clue what they'll learn, but they'll learn something. <laughs> God's good, I guess. Yeah. 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 Jerry. I had Michael to teach Sunday school this morning in the adult class, which I usually do, but I want him to teach this morning. And so I ventured upstairs to the youth class where this young man was teaching. I wanted to sit in on it for a minute. And that a minute is all I could last. <laughs> he said, and I quote, he said, he was teaching on being naked before the Lord. He went back to Adam and he said, uh, you know how we do, us men put shirts on and say, man, we look good. If you don't know this guy, he's the most arrogant <laughs> individual in this church. He said, except for me. He said, a lady will say, put a dress on and say, do I look good in this? And I, when he said that, I said, I'm next in this <laughs> room now. He did a good job teaching up there this morning. I can hear him. And uh, Aaron's doing a good job leading her youth. Jeremy's been helping teach a little bit. Can you give it up for your company in the morning? Give me my hand. Thank you all. Yes. Huh? You can do anything you want to do, love. Stay wherever you want to stay. <laughs> Judges chapter 5 this morning. How many is glad you're here? Amen. 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 I said, how many glad you're here? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Now, Ashley, go come back to the people. Uh, now, I got you all to clap because you said you're glad you're here. I'm going to get you to clap again after this sermon. See how many people are glad. Give me, I think, a G. I'm going to sing a, a chorus right quick. No, you're all right. Help me if you know this course. Jesus, use me. And oh, Lord, don't refuse me. For surely.
many knows we're in a battle this morning? That's right. Uh, you ain't going to help me, but we're going somewhere this morning. Come on. I'm going to preach different than I ever preached before in my life. Come on. This chapter in Judges chapter 5 tells us God's will for us and our involvement. For when God declares war on something or on an enemy, he expects a ready response from us when it's war time. How right. dare us sit in the pews and do nothing? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You ain't going to help me this morning, but I'm here. Yeah. Judges chapter 5 verse number 2 tells us that God expects us to uh, be a willingly offer ourselves for the battle. Verse 4 of that same chapter tells us that the earth trembled and the heavens dropped yeah. and the clouds also dropped water when God went to war. It's as if the earth had ears to hear when God declared war and says I can't do much to help in this war but if God's going to war then I'll just start trembling. Maybe Yeah. 
They sound powerful when it talks about the kings of the earth coming to fight the battle. Uh -huh. It's powerful when it talks about the stars of heaven fighting the battle. It's powerful when verse 21 said the river of Kishon said if God's enemy can be shoved into the river I'll wash them away from him. All of that sounds good. God is in a battle and people and things are involved doing their part to assure that God wins this war. But until you come to verse 23 and verse 23 said the angel of the Lord puts a curse on Miraz uh, with all that stuff that was being done to help God in the midst of the battle according to the Bible and everything I've read Miraz is, is mentioned one time in the entirety of God's word Miraz was a people that stood there and saw God in the battle saw him waging war saw him fight with everything in him and the Bible said the angel of the Lord saw Stop it. 
when Elijah failed, when he was in that cave, when he said to God, am I the only one left? Uh-huh. I pastored now for 30 years. This gentleman right here pastored for 50 years. God bless you for your service you've done to the kingdom of God. But the reality, the reality is, Pastor, is that there's a lot of times I feel like I'm standing on the battlefield all by myself. Paul got with it when he said, I keep giving to the church and giving and giving and giving and getting nothing back. And he said, how dare any of you for me to wage this war of a good fight of faith and for me to run this race and keep my faith and preserve my crown of life and give out and give out and give out while you sat there and do nothing for the kingdom of God. Amen. I'm not preaching to everybody this morning. You know who's working That's for the right. kingdom. But I am preaching to some of us. And let me just make this statement so nobody thinks anything different. There are things I can be doing that I'm not doing. Uh -huh. So God says to me when I started studying this uh, this sermon, hey man, what are you going to do? How much more are you going to give? I got real quiet on you. Nobody has the right to stand by and do nothing while God is at war. Uh -uh. Let me give you some scripture. Matthew chapter 12, verse 30. Anybody can quote it? Jesus said, He that is not with me is against me. And he that gathers not with me scatters abroad. Jesus said, The day you make up, you got to make up your mind today. And I want to share something with you. My pastor used to tell me. He said, Every sermon you hear will meet you in the judgment. Uh -huh. So I'm not preaching this morning something I'm just pinned down and thought, well, it'd be just another sermon. And it'll go on and we, it won't change anything. And we'll be the same next week as we are right now. I came to tell you all, I want this message to change us. I want it to get in our heart. I want some people that's been sitting on the sideline afraid to get in the battle because you're afraid you'll get hurt again. And some church down the road hurt you. I'm telling you,
waitress on Sunday and you give to God, when you give an 18% tip down at the local Bell Air Grill, Shoney's Restaurant, and you and you begrudging that 10% that God's asking you for, honey, you ain't a soldier. You're either with me or you're against me. You're either part of the solution or you're part of the problem. Tell it. Tell it. Amen. Tell it. Did you know statistically that the church in America is run by 10% of the church being tithers? Uh huh. That means that 10, of, 10 out of 100 are problem solvers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The rest of them, y'all troublemakers. <laughs> y'all problems. Ah, hallelujah. They done paid me for this week so I can preach on this. <laughs> Glory to God. It's time we examine ourselves. And say, whose side are we on? Have we really gave God our all? There needs to be. Let, let, let me back up for a minute. It's sad that most of the people that attend church simply come one service and go home. Damn it. Damn it. Sad. And I'm going to say this to you, I, I, and I hope your heart hears it. I need you here. More than one service a week. I, as a man of God, going through struggles and the pressure Satan puts on me and the world puts on me and the church folk put on me, I need to be able to get up in this pulpit and look back and say, you know what? They're hearing what I'm saying. I don't like getting up here preaching on Sunday morning and come back Sunday night and there'll be 70 or 80 of us here and I'm sitting here going, 100 of us didn't get it. That's right. I feel like I'm defeated when you do. I need you here. And let, and let me just share something with you. You need us. If you didn't think you needed us, you wouldn't bother to come Sunday morning. Tell it. Tell it, Pastor. I invited a man and his wife to this church for three or four years. And every funeral I saw on that, I didn't buy him. But we gonna come, yeah, we can. They didn't come. But the first morning they walked in this church. They ain't talking about a blessing. I love you. They've been coming down for about a year. And they have no clue what, what it makes me feel like when they walk in that church. That's right. Because we have to figure out in our heart that we need each other. Yeah. I'm going to face stuff this week that I might need you to help me pray through. And if you're not in the battle, Thanks you can't God. help me. If your sword ain't sharp, you can't give me uh -uh. words that'll bring me out. You're right. oh, God, help me. There needs to be a clarion call go out for us to stand up, for us to take arms again, for us to have a desire to fight again. Yeah. We have no one on the front lines. Listen to me. And don't take this the wrong way. Yeah. I'll quit apologizing this preach. Years ago when I used to be in the world to be a sinner, 
I'd go to them rock and roll concerts. Uh -huh. yeah. And not one time, though, did I want to sit on the back row. Uh -uh. No, sir. I pushed my way to the front. You know why? Because ACDC was going to be on stage. Uh -huh. And I had to be just up under there and watch it. I had to look up at Angus Young. Playing that stupid demon. Now it's guitar. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. I went and skated in concert. I was up front. Yeah. All the, I, I got up front. I go to the ball game. I wanted to I, I, I go on the sidelines. I wanted to help the guy coach. Come on. I, you should have made them turn right. They turned left. That's why they got tackled. I, I, come on. I went to boxing matches when I was in the Golden Gloves fighting. And, and, and I didn't want to be in the stand. I wanted to be in the ring. Come on. Yeah. But it's amazing to me now that when we come to church, most of us are like that. But most of us now, when we come to church, it's going to be like the ball game or the rock and roll concert. When we flood the church, the front of the church, we're scared of the first three rows. Come on, somebody. We act like there's something to be scared of. So the further back we can be is the best we can get. You know what that says to everybody? You want to be disengaged. You don't want to invest. You don't want to be part. Come on, yes, sir. There ain't nobody sitting on these front rows. It ain't crowded. Why not get up here next to where the fire is? Come on, somebody. Why not just move up a little bit and tell God, I want him to battle. You know what I like to sing this morning? We sing that. I got my foot on the rock and my mind's I like to sing about 60 of you. Hit the floor right up here in this front and just shout all over this place. Why do you think we got them chairs set so far back from the stage so you can have dancing ground? I went to the bar a few years ago. I didn't sit in the pew or on the chair at a table. No, sir. When they started, there's a tear in my beer. I got out on the floor and I danced me a little jig. I don't know why in the world when we come to church that we can't just let it loose and let go.
when the older gentleman turned around and saw a bear come down out of the woods and got in the garden. That thing raised up, started roaring, and the old man grabbed his wife and took off to the house. Run inside and got his double barrel shotgun. Come back out of the house by himself and went running out there. Started shooting the south end of that northbound bear. You'll get that in a minute. <laughs> he started shooting that bear and took off running back toward the woods. He run that bear, kept loading the shells and shooting that bear going up into the woods, running him off. Finally, after the danger was gone, he turned around. To his surprise, his wife was standing behind him with a hairbrush in her hand. <laughs> and he said, Honey, what was you thinking you're going to do with a hairbrush? She said, Paul, I don't think I could have done much, but I wanted that bear to know whose side I was on. <laughs> oh my God. You might only have a hairbrush this morning, but if I
uh, minister was coming to our church before we moved. And I was in my room walking the floors that night. I knew he was coming and he was a prophetic man. He was an evangelist and had discernment. And I began to weep and cry and tell the Lord that my armor was deep and battered through the years of all that I've been through in my life. And I said, Lord, how much can the enemy put his fiery darts and dig my bed on my armor? And Lord, I need a new armor to fight this battle, the battles that were yet to come. I didn't know this man, but I went to church the next day, and he and his wife both had a ministry. And I stood in for my neighbor who was fighting cancer. And he prayed over me. But then as I went to walk away, the lady said, come here. She said, Sister, the Lord just spoke this word to me. He said, your armor is stained and battered. And he sees the fight that you've been in. But I, the Lord, am putting a new armor on you. And as we can take this new armor for it to be shiny and to set up. He gave it to me because he knows there's battles coming. There's battles that are coming. I'm one that, God, I rush around during the day and busy, sometimes busy doing nothing. But when I get alone at night is when I get a song in the night. That's night about midnight. Pastor, I'm praying for you. And I ask the Lord, that Lord, when Pastor steps in front of the podium, Anoint him afresh. Anoint him for the word that we need. And I ask the Lord, anoint our church, Sister Dawn. This week the enemy attacked you with sickness and he attacked me. And why did he do that? Because God has an anointing and our steps are ordered. And he has a plan for us. And the devil wants to not have that happen. But oh, greater is he in me and greater is he in you. And God's plan is going to go forward. Sister Sharon, last night in the midnight hour, I was impressed to, to pray for Jordan. We were away for a month. And I was always praying for Jordan, but I didn't even know he was in the hospital. But last night, I prayed for Jordan, and I felt in my spirit, God's going to raise up this man, this young son. He's going to raise him up. And I had a song in the night for Jordan. I get a song in the night, a song.
his clothes, his helm, and then it burnt off all the way to the skin, and yet it didn't hit the skin. And I believe, Pastor, that's a praying grandmother and a praying mother. I have grandchildren that are not where they need to be. And church, we need to bind together with cords that can't be broken. And we need to let the fresh anointing of God sweep this church and be ready recipients for what God has for us. He's ready to go to battle. Amen. I love the Lord. Great word, Sister Diane. Great word. She's a testifier. Amen. a great spirit about her. We are. I'm, I, I'm overwhelmingly excited about tonight. talked to Bishop Rogers this week and he said I'm going to come and preach the house down. If you've never heard this man, he is the presiding bishop for the fire baptized holiness church. And uh, he's going to come tonight and preach to us. I want everybody here, please don't allow us to have more visitors than we got in church right now. Okay? So please, if you only come on Sunday morning, take a chance and come tonight. Amen. Right? Please. And, uh, you might find out you like Sunday night service. <laughs> it's more laid back. And uh, in the next little while, we're, we're going to change our Sunday night service to evangelistic services. And uh, we, we're going to be... We're going to be up with the best of the brother. God's doing a good work here. Look around this crowd this morning. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Great crowd. Awesome. I'm looking for the time I've ever seen before. Got a hundred in that balcony up there. It'll set a hundred, so I think we can get above that. All right? Y'all love the Lord? Amen. Everybody still love me, even though I preach. Amen. Amen.